Have you ever wondered what games you should keep or you should lose? Find out here at Purdue. Mordred is a Martin Wallace game, so right there it has a huge pedigree with it because Martin Wallace is one of the greatest board game designers of all time. And Mordred is something different. I so wish this game had a different name. I really do. I think that name of this game likely held it back. I don't know what the cells are. I have no idea what they were. It's a semi-cooperative King Arthur game, okay? And you're going to be cooperating to keep the bad guys off the board because if the bad guys win, there's a different way the game is going to score versus if uh, you're able to keep them back a little bit and it will score differently and you'll be able to actually win the game. Well, the other one is the players will theoretically lose the game. And, you know, there's some dice rolling in this and you can do your best and the dice just don't go in your favor. You're not going to do very well in this game. So it's all about minimizing your luck. It's about minimizing the forces in the game that are playing against you. And how do you manipulate your board by making decisions in your best interest to score the most that you'll be able to score during the game? I think there's a situation where things just won't play out because Lady Luck isn't there. I don't know what you can do about it. You just do the best that you can. Fair enough. But that's not what this game is about. This game is about you know King Arthur and heroes and you have this evil force coming and evil forces doing things and there are just things out of your control. I do like the little mechanism you do at the beginning of each round where you roll in dice for money and there's a safe bet that will pay you less but the bad guys will have less of a force out. And if you always do that safe bet and your and your opponents are doing that gamble, 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 they're probably going to beat you. So you need to kind of gamble, but you guys want to hold back collectively. But if you hold back collectively, you're not getting the advantage of something. So it's just push and pull, and I really, really like that. This is a game I'd honestly like to see reworked. I'd really like to see this reworked with a different title, upgraded components, and just kind of streamline it a little bit. I think that you would have a hit here. I think Martin Wallace is sitting on this game right now. Maybe he doesn't know what he has. I think this is a game that came out now in this semi-cooperative nature or, or cooperative nature of gamers. I think this one could hit. I would love to see this one back on Kickstarter. In its certain in its current condition, I think I'm going to purge this one. It's not something that I'm going to get to the table a whole lot. The components kind of don't speak to me. Uh, the title in the box art isn't that great for me. Uh, and I, I think it just has a little bit too much luck for what I'm looking for in a game. But man, I'd like to see this one done again in the future for modern audiences. More just going to be a purse for me. But this is what I'm going to say. Hey, pause. Check this one out and see if maybe you like this one. So here's Mordred by uh, Martin Wallace. And, and really, it plays as a family game. So this isn't going to play too well. At least you know, the King Arthur going up uh, against the bad guys there. You're going to have a rule book, which we'll take a look at in another segment. And these are going to be the components. So, uh, you know, uh, Martin Wallace, Martin Wallace, Martin Wallace. Uh, giant chunks of wood that represent buildings and such. I mean, you've seen these in all his games. These are kind of neat. I mean, this is a 15-year-old game, so it is what it is. These little meeple guys are nice. Uh, these represent the, back, the bad guys in the game. And you have the money that's used. I don't know if he has stock in this company or what, but he seems to use this for money in all of the games. You get two very, very small dice down here. Okay. And uh, everything fits in the box fairly well. Now, the board I actually do like, uh, you know, maybe in a more serious game, and what really is a luck heavy game. It's nice because you have a little track going across the top. I'll go this way with it. You have a little cross going across the top here. You have your tables. Everything you need to know to play the game is here and everything that's set up here. So it works It works fairly well. I like the colorful nature of it. I think it fits the theme and the weight of the game fairly well. So here's the rule book, which I like a lot, especially this overview. This overview actually teaches you the game and makes everything make sense and it's excellent. Do not skip it. You have the picture of the components down here, which is really, really nice to kind of show you where everything is. And you're going to open it up. This just kind of tells you over the map. But the game is super simple in the pictures and examples. Great, excellent rule book with a cheat sheet on the back. Two thumbs up. One of the best rule books on Martin Wallace games I've seen. The game is super simple anyway, but excellent job. And I do usually like his rule books. Very straightforward. So the first thing we do every round is this money table. And at, when it's your turn, you're going to choose whether you're going to roll on the A table, the B table, or the C table. And the rule book is very clear that if you don't choose something or everybody to hear you, then it's automatically C. 
we're going to do is roll, and whenever you roll, you're going to get the money associated with it. So let's say here. Let's say you choose A, uh, 4, and a 5. If you chose A, you get uh, 3 and 3 is 6. If you had picked B, 4 and 5 is 9, or here 5 and 6 is 11. The trick over here is that you also get paid on these, but the black spots will bring out the bad guys onto the board. So let's say I rolled C. I would get uh, $6 here. And I would get three dollars here for nine, and I would also get the number of people on the pips, which is one. If I had rolled a two, then I would have got the six plus two, and I would get two people to put on the board. Uh, that's kind of how that works. Then I have to place any of these guys on the board that I was able to obtain. The first one always goes in the castle, and the next one would go somewhere adjacent to it. So if you look on the board, there's a little pathway. It just has to continue to be adjacent. So as these guys come out on the board, I can choose now if I want to put him here or here, and they would continue to go that route. So let's say there's a building here, and I'm going to be putting, for whatever reason, there's a uh, person there, and I want to go adjacent to him in this location. Then what I would do is I would roll the dice and there's a little bit of a cheat sheet on the board up here that you can see what I have to roll. So if you wanted to place that guy there, his defense would be such. Uh, this is the big one, so five. So I'd have to roll five or higher. I did not. So his building would stay on the spot and this guy would go back to supply and not on the board. So you can take your opponent's pieces off by rolling on this first list over here. Uh, if you want to put those on and put those in those locations. Then I'm going to take whatever money I have for the round and I'm going to start putting buildings out on the board. If you look here at the bottom of the board, it's going to tell you how much things cost and how many victory points they're worth. So once again, we were talking about this piece right here. Uh, this piece right here is worth two victory points if it's on the board at the end of the game. If I place it in a mountain region, it costs $8. If I put it in the forest region, it is $10. So you can just put out as many of these buildings as you can afford. You don't have to spend any of your money. You can save it round to round. You can save as much money as you want. At the end of the game, there are two winning conditions. Uh, so you can have a situation where there are more of the Mordred men on the chart than there are on this. So in this case, there's two and there's one. What you would do is you go up to this chart at the top of the board. And the way this chart is going to work is you're going to have a pawn that you would put here. And every time you put one of these people on the board, because you rolled on the table, black square, you're also going to move this chart up like this. So if I had to put two people out on the board, he would move one, two spaces. At that point, whoever uh, is behind on the chart the most would win. If there's more bad guys, then there are buildings from all the players collectively on the board because you've helped the most. Now, if the number of buildings on the board outnumbers the King Arthur people, in this case three to one, then you would just count up the victory points and the victory you get victory points for the buildings that you were able to create. You just count them up and whoever has the most victory points is your winner. And that's how you play Mordred. Who should buy this game? Anyone who's a fan of Martin Wallace, right off the bat. You love your Martin Wallace games, you're going to like this one. This one has a little bit more luck in it. It's a semi-cooperative where you're trying to hold back those evil forces together as much as possible uh, and still do your thing. And there's a lot of interesting decisions, but a lot of luck in this game also. So if that sounds like something that's interesting to you, then I would say uh, check this one out. This is when I say people, if you're a fan of Martin Wallace, you might want to go back and look at this one. Really want to see this one re-released. Uh, it's going to be a purge for me, but it's so close to being a great game.